the Honorable Minister of Health, Seniors and Active Living. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In keeping with the commitment made following the Opiate Summit in Ottawa, I'd like to provide an update to this House regarding the fight against the illegal use of opiates, including fentanyl and carfentanyl. On November 25th, our government launched a public awareness campaign about the dangers of fentanyl and fentanyl-laced drugs. The campaign was launched at a Winnipeg school, Shaftesbury High School, and a rural school, Steinbeck Regional Secondary School. As of Wednesday of this week, 1,500 information boards related to this campaign have been distributed to regional health authorities, schools, and other community organizations in Manitoba. The social media campaign associated with the campaign has currently received more than 60,000 views. In addition, and as committed to, the Addictions Foundation of Manitoba has made several public presentations in recent weeks on the danger posed by opiates. This includes a recent fentanyl training day where 450 school counselors and police officers received training about the dangers of fentanyl. Part of the overall effort involves harm reduction and the availability of naloxone. Different points of naloxone availability exist, including through street connections in Winnipeg. As of Wednesday of this week, 191 kits have been distributed at street connections with 22 being used to successfully reverse an overdose. In addition, 500 more kits of naloxone have been ordered and will be received by mid-December with an additional 500 to be received in January. More than 20 sites have been identified as naloxone distribution centers throughout Manitoba for these kits. Training is underway currently so that proper information can be provided at these sites. However, Madam Speaker, we again emphasize that naloxone is not a safety net for fentanyl use. It may mitigate but can never eliminate the deadly risk of fentanyl use. In addition, in addition, late last week, the Government of Canada signed an MOU with China to allow the RCMP to work with China to try to stem the tide of illicit fentanyl coming into Canada. And I was pleased to hear this morning that the RCMP in British Columbia had a record seizure of fentanyl coming in from China. And we look forward to uh, more cooperation and the reduction of opiates and fentanyl coming in from China. This is one of the actions that Manitoba called for at the Opiate Summit, and we continue to call for a national ban on pill presses and increased ability for Canada Border Services Agency to detect the importation of fentanyl. Madam Speaker, on the issue of overdoses, last year 151 individuals in Manitoba died from a drug overdose. These deaths were caused by several different drugs. I'm advised by the Chief Medical Examiner and the Chief Medical Officer of Health that based on the results of the first five months of 2016, that the number of fatalities due to drug overdoses this year could be expected to be in the range of 165 to 170, or approximately a 9% increase. A greater proportion of those overdose deaths is expected to be from fentanyl this year than in past years. Both the CME and the CMO of Health indicate that these are only estimates based on the most recent data available, but we felt it was important to provide it to the House. Madam Speaker, while I have provided a variety of data and statistics for the benefit of this House and Manitobans, we must always remember that behind each of these numbers is someone's son, daughter, mother, or father. Addiction is not a series of numbers, it is a series of individual lives. Thank you for the opportunity to provide this House this update, and I'd like to encourage each of us as we enter the break, the recess, to do our part to spread the word about the dangers of fentanyl and all drugs in the communities that we represent. Thank you, Madam Speaker.